to Trust Talks with BBB Serving CT. I'm Kristen Johnson. In Business Trust Talks, and Better Business Bureau's mission is to enhance marketplace trust. In each of our episodes, we hope to give you a better understanding of what to expect, what to look for, and what to look out for so you can spend your money wisely and avoid being scammed. Every year, Better Business Bureau ranks more than 5,000 industries by the number of inquiries and complaints. General contractors were the third most inquired about type of business in 2021, with over 4 million inquiries to Better Business Bureau. By comparison, the remodeling industry received just under 400,000 inquiries last year, ranking it 77. To help us navigate our next home improvement project, Keith Santora of Handiworks Remodeling and Design out of Wallingford joins us now. And thank you so much for being with us today, Keith. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. So we're going to cover a bunch of different topics today, starting with um, the right questions to ask when you're going to hire a remodeling company. I'm also planning on asking you to kind of explain the difference between a, a general contractor and a remodeler, and then the importance of designing a project from the beginning before the work begins. But first, tell us a little bit about Handiworks Remodeling and Design. Handiworks Remodeling and Design is a general remodeler for the residential industry. And if it has anything to do with your home, it's probably something we can help you with. Sometimes a remodeler will hire a subcontractor, say for the plumbing work or the electrical work. Is it better to hire the subcontractors yourself or is there a benefit to having someone like Handiworks Remodeling hire those subcontractors for you? There's a huge benefit to having the contractor hire the subcontractors, mostly because scheduling and ordering issues and taking the responsibility of failures away from the, the, the client. We, we want to help you have a smooth transition through your project. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to let us handle the whole thing. What is one question that pers prospective clients should ask you that you don't hear often enough? What we wish we'd hear more of is about insurance. Mm. Many people are eluded into thinking that if a contractor says he has insurance, he's properly insured. Many times that's not the case. Um, one of the things that's usually missing is workers' compensation. There may be general liability involved. Most contractors have that. It's inexpensive and it's easy to get. But workers' compensation is a different issue. And oftentimes there is not enough workers' compensation, if any, in place at a work site. So what documentation should you be asking them to show you to verify that they have that workers' compensation There's insurance? a document called an Accord Certification. And any contractor that has insurance is easily put in touch with his own agent so that he can ask that agency to send that Accord Certification to the client directly. And it's something that should usually happen within 48 hours. So I, I understand it's important to plan the project from start to finish before the work begins. Why is that? When the plan is complete and everybody's on the same page, it leaves less room for error. It's, it's bad enough things can go bad on a, on a project because time delays, um, supply chain issues that have all come into place because of the pandemic. So having the planning done first and having a design in place is most important to ensure the smooth transition from the beginning to the end of the project. So the design of the finished project should be completed before the work even begins? Absolutely. Is there any wiggle room during construction or reconstruction? Hey, I changed my mind about this. What happens then? It I'm sure happens it happens all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So that's something we call a change order. And if in the middle of a project you make a decision to do something different that was part of the original plan, it's easy enough to make that change as long as it's something we haven't done yet. If it's, for instance, walls that have been already built and you decide you want to move something a few inches because now you can have that larger couch that you wanted, it might be a little bit more costly, but it's always doable. What about professional associations? People in your line of work, are there any professional associations that they're members of that we should be asking a, a potential contractor about? Sure. Um, asking if they're a member of the Better Business Bureau <laughs> and if they're accredited or not is a good place to start. Um, 
and then looking at their profiles in any other number of different places is also important. We talked about working, workers' compensation insurance. Um, I, I understand, depending on the type of work, there's different state licensing requirements. Mm -hmm. So depending on your, the scope of your project, what kind of questions should you be asking about licensing? A and where can you find that information or verify that? Well, you can verify somebody's license through the state website. Uh, consumer protection has all that information readily available. But generally speaking, you should ask the contractor about his own license. Um, and then, once again, you want to, at the same time, follow through with the, the insurance information so that you can make sure that at least the proper documentation is in place. And if they are hiring the subcontractors for you, do they do all the work then as far as making sure the subcontractors, like the plumber, or the electrician, have the right licensing, or do you need to take that step and, and find that out yourself? Well, the, the remodeler that you're hiring should handle all of that, and especially if there's a building permit necessary, then the building department is going to require that licensing proof as well before they issue the subcontractor's permits. Okay, that makes sense. This is one of the most inquired about industries. I mean, when we look at the stats every year, it's, it's in the top five. Um, and unfortunately, there's some bad actors out there mm -hmm. that sometimes give general contractors a bad name. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the scams that you've seen most prevalent in this industry? The one that comes to mind, first and foremost, is a contractor will accept the project that you would like to do, and then they'll come in, take a big down payment, do the demolition work, and then disappear. So how do you get around that? Well, just do as much vetting as you can. And once again, organizations like the Better Business Bureau is a good place to start. They're probably not going to tell you whether that contractor is a specialist in kitchens or a specialist in bathrooms or additions, but at least you'll be able to find out who they are, how long they've been in business, how long they've been accredited with the Better Business Bureau, if there's complaints against them. You know, there, there's a lot of things you can do on your own, as well as there's other social media platforms that you can look into if you would like to see somebody's reputation. Research, research, research. That's what we always tell people. Absolutely. And don't put down a big down payment to, nope. to begin with. It's not necessary. For instance, we never ask for large down payments. What we may do is ask for a percentage of the total, um, maybe a 5 or 10% deposit, depends on the size of the project. Many contractors ask for large deposits because they're not liquid and, mm -hmm. and they need your money to get started. Not that it it would be fair to think that you shouldn't pay, nobody's saying that, but it's fair that a contractor should be solvent and, and, in, and in good standing with his bank and anybody that he you know, gets materials from. His suppliers should all be paid in full every month. Many times they're not, and there's delays in getting materials because maybe somebody is not a great credit risk and they're put on a COD basis. So unless they have your money, they can't even get the materials there. So there's a lot to look into. So if a contractor requires you to pay everything up front, that's a red flag. I would run away <laughs> as quickly as I could. What other red flags should we be looking out for? Insurance. Mm -hmm. um, it's always important. Um, another thing is you might, would like, you, you might like to ask how long they've been in business. How many employees do they have? And what I mean by that is how many W-2 payroll employees do they have? Do they have an office staff? Do they have support so that your project gets all the attention that it needs? Everyone's online these days, so imagine if they don't have a website, that's something else you should be suspicious of. That's a flag. I mean, at the very least, you can use uh, a template and design a website for yourself if you don't want to have it done professionally or if you're just getting started in business. You may want to opt for that because it's a little less expensive or sometimes free. But it's the effort that goes into it that's important. If you can't afford to have a web designer, then it's probably a good idea to just find somebody that might be able to help you to do your own. 
So when we're looking at a company's website, what should we be looking for? Okay, well, there's a wide variety of information available on people's websites. You'll, you'll see the about us type of information. You'll see a photo gallery. You may see uh, other information about some of the employees that may work for them. Important things are that you, you, when you look at the photographs, you want to make sure they're not stock photographs. Making sure that they're photographs of actual projects that have been completed by that company. You can tell. When it looks like it came out of a magazine, it's probably a stock photo. And if it, you see that same photo somewhere else on someone else's website. Or if you see, <laughs> yeah. They can't be in two places at once. Right? No, they can't. Well, one of the interesting things is, is that in this day and age, with all of the IT information that's available out there, you can buy groups of photos. I mean, you can, you can literally put into a search engine stock photos for remodelers and you will get more information than you ever dreamed about. And then you can then either buy them or sometimes they're free and you can download them and you can upload them to your own website. And that's why you need to read the reviews. You need to read find out reviews. what people are saying and, and not just judge Correct. it by their pictures Correct. on their website. So you're also on the board of directors at Better Business Bureau. I am. Why was it important for Handiworks Remodeling and Design to become accredited? Well, that accreditation is important because becoming accredited means that there's nothing bad about you out there. Because if you, if you have complaints or if you're just not a great risk, then BBB is not even going to allow you to be a member. And then the accreditation and, and the, the level of rating comes with time. So if you look at somebody and they have a B rating or a B plus rating, that's not an A or an A plus yet, but you can see that they're on the right path. Whereas if somebody has a lower rating or if somebody has membership but complaints, that might be something else you want to look at. How long has Handiworks been accredited with BBB? 16 years. Wow. And how has that accreditation helped you and helped your business? Well, when people want to vet us, that's one of the places they look and they see we have an A plus rating and we've been accredited for quite some time. So it gives people a, a, a level of you know, security to know that if you've been there that long, and I don't mean just us, any company, if they've been there for a long period of time and there's really no complaints against them, that's probably a good risk. You know, there's been some economic uncertainty over the last few years. We've had the pandemic, now inflation. Have you had to adjust your business model at all? A little bit. And, and I won't say to any large mm -hmm. amount because <clears throat> our business model has always been an honest approach. So if prices go up, then of course, that's part of our estimating when we, when we look at the finances on your project. So if a two by four goes from five to six dollars, then of course we're gonna charge six if that's when you're asking us. Then sometimes they go up again and we have no control. So we just have to stay in touch with price increases and just keep them moving into our estimating on a regular basis if that's when they occur. It's the old days, and I say the old days as in pre-pandemic, you know, we would come into every spring season and prices would go up a little bit. You'd see a, you know, one and a half, two percent raise in, in um, a material cost or lumber cost. And then after the holiday season, at the end of the year, they'd go back down again. So this was kind of a normal wave that we could always count on. But now things are so erratic and so difficult to predict, we don't know what's going to happen. So if somebody gets sticker shock, when we give them the price, it's because it's out of our control. I wish we had more control. But that's important for prospective clients to remember, for people to know out there. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of do-it-yourselfers out there, and probably yes, more yeah. so because they don't want to deal with these prices. <laughs> you get a lot of calls from people who realize halfway through the project they need to hire a professional. Yes, we, we get those. Um, and it's okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with giving something the good old college try and finding out that you want to go in a different direction. Um, we're happy to talk to anybody that calls us with 
any level of completion that's still left on a project. We have some people that demo a whole bathroom and then they go, boy, I thought I was going to have time for this, but I just don't. Well, it's okay. We can come in and take a look at it and help you figure out what to do next. Okay. A lot of our modeling work is indoors, so I imagine that fall and winter are probably a very popular time to, to hire handiworks. Is that true? Do you have a busy season? Yes, all year. Oh. It's, it's the, <laughs> I know that's not the norm because for the years you've been hearing how busy remodelers get because the outside stuff starts, like decks and additions. But we also do a great deal of interior work um, that weather has no bearing. Uh, as long as you have heat and air conditioning, we're okay all year long. So we stay pretty busy. Um, things do get busier when the warm weather comes. For instance, we'll get more inquiries for estimating. But we can't take more work than we can accomplish within a certain period of time. So we end up offering people a further lead time for us to get started. So you may ask us to do something and say, gee, is it too late to still build a deck this year? It could be because I may not have the time. We have f five different crews, so if they're all busy, that's as much as we can do. Oh, and that, I was going to ask, you know, uh, if someone wants some work done in the next few months, is it too late for them to request a quote? No, no. Uh, as long as you have enough time in your timeline okay. to wait for us to get there, then it's never too late to ask for a quote. Or a consultation. So in a perfect world, how many months in advance should you interview contractors and sign on the dotted line? Depends on the nature of the project. The larger projects you should start sooner than later. Uh, small projects like little remodel projects or something that you're not trying to change or reconfigure the interior of your house, those are a little easier to do, they're a little easier to estimate and they take less time. So you could ask us to do something and it might only be a week long project. But if you ask us to do an extended project that requires a kitchen remodel and an addition with a bathroom and things of that nature, you should probably start looking for a contractor six months before you'd like that project to begin. Okay, very good. Is there anything else that you'd like our viewers to know? I know we touched on many topics today. We have. Um, yeah, the most important thing, and I would say, this pandemic or reaction to the pandemic has spawned a lot of new businesses in our industry. Just do your homework. I can't stress it enough. I hear too many stories where people are very unhappy with, with whoever they chose or whatever those folks did. Um, you can avoid that. Just do your homework as Keith, much as possible. Thanks so much Thank for sharing you. your expertise with us. Thanks. Keith Santora of Handiworks Remodeling and Design in Wallingford. Better Business Bureau compiles data for about 6,000 different types of businesses. While general contractors were the third most inquired about industry last year with under 4,000 complaints, it ranked 63rd in the number of complaints filed at BBB.org. Our data shows that when consumers do their research, they're less likely to file a complaint. Consider these tips when hiring anybody to work in your home. Research and gather information. At BBB.org, you can search for a contractor's business profile and see if they are an accredited business. BBB accredited businesses make a commitment to build trust, advertise honestly, tell the truth, be transparent, honor their promises, be responsive to their customers, safeguard privacy, and embody integrity. Create a scope of work. This will help you stay on budget and understand the amount of time the project will take. And review the reviews. Look online to see what past customers have to say. Don't just rely on the business's website where the owner controls what reviews are seen. Use independent sites like BBB.org to find the right fit. Always get estimates in writing and never let any work begin without a written and signed contract. 
Do not be pressured into signing an agreement before you are ready and make sure you read and understand everything before signing. The contract should include contact information, starting completion dates, a detailed description of the exact work to be done, any material costs, payment arrangements, and warranty information. Specify who is to obtain necessary building permits and who is responsible for cleanup. Make sure all verbal promises are included in the contract. Ask how much work will be subcontracted and ask for information on the subcontractors. Ask questions if you do not understand any part of the contract. Never sign an incomplete or partially blank contract. Verify license and insurance. Always be sure that the company you decide to work with has the necessary licenses and insurance to work in your region. Once you have your contractor's insurance information, call the carrier to confirm appropriate coverage for workers' compensation, property property damage, and personal liability in case of accidents. And confirm building permits. Your contractor must have the correct permits before starting your project. They will usually obtain the permits, but you will probably pay for them. That should be detailed in your contract. Request that all final inspections be completed by the local building official prior to final payment. Inquire about a lien waiver. A lien waiver is a statement from your contractor that says all suppliers and subcontractors have been paid for their work. Think about future service issues. Make sure you are aware of your warranty coverage and how to deal with service issues. Arrange a payment schedule. Never pay in full up front. Stagger your payments so your final payment is not due until the work is complete and you have fully inspected it. Do not pay in cash. Make sure your check is written to a company, not an individual, or that you use a credit card. Paying with a credit card will provide some recourse should the job not be completed as stated in the contract. Get a receipt. Request a receipt marked paid in full when the job is completed and your final payment is made. Keep your contract. Hold on to your contract for future reference or if any questions arise after the work is complete. Hiring a reliable and trustworthy contractor is one of the most important steps you can make in your project. Hire the right one and you can relax knowing your project is in good hands. Hire the wrong one and you could face a wide range of problems from unfinished work to being sued because the workers weren't paid. At BBB.org, you can look up accredited businesses. You can search reviews and look for a pattern of complaints. And if you've had a good experience with a local contractor, leave a review for them as well and help others as they do their own research. That does it for Trust Talks. I'm Kristen Johnson. We'll see you next time.